Hey, what's up? This is John, and today I'm going to be reviewing the newest Blu-ray from Agfa, Amanda and the Alien. Okay, but if you're trying to trick me, I will consume you. So this one was my most anticipated purchase of the month, I think, from Vinegar Syndrome and the subscriber package that I get. And I think a lot of it had to do with this goofy, young adult novel looking slipcover that they did here, which kind of looks like a Babysitter's Club or Goosebumps or Nancy Drew, that kind of a thing. You know, after watching this movie last night, I am realizing now that the description here on the back is pretty wrong. Um, it's very strange. There is life, love, and paprika in this movie, as we'll get to, but I'm not sure that the person who made the slipcover watched the whole movie. Hey, take it easy. So some of the things that drew me to the movie are, you know, one, that it kind of had that with the title, that Tammy and the T-Rex kind of feeling that like silly could only exist in the 90s sort of a thing, where you know, there's movies like Tammy and the T-Rex, there's movies like Theodore Rex with Whoopi Goldberg, where she's a cop who's a partner with a dinosaur. You know, movies like Tank Girl, like all this stuff that doesn't seem to get made anymore for better or worse. And, you know, as some of the supplements on this say, in the 90s, sex was in and aliens were in. So starting this movie, I couldn't figure, it doesn't say on the box that I'm like, what is this movie rated? And not that movies have to be for anybody, but I don't know, I tend to sort of try to figure out as somebody who likes cutting trailers and thinks about marketing and stuff like that, I'm thinking like, what audience is this aimed at? Honey, I puke when I give blood. This isn't something I wanna watch. And I was very surprised later to find out that this had been initially a really big hit when it aired on Showtime. The movie looks a lot like a show on Nickelodeon, say. I mean, specifically it'll make you think of, if you ever saw it, The Secret World of Alex Mack, which I watched a bunch when I was a kid, and specifically the way that the aliens do their morphing thing, and they, they become a very different shape and size, and that sort of reminded me of when Alex Mack would kind of turn into like a T-1000 liquid metal puddle that could go under doors and that was really cool and that was something that, you know, as a kid you would wish that you could do and that it was real. But anyways, so the plot of this movie is the government is after these body snatching aliens that their method of body snatching is to morph into this kind of sea creature looking thing and then snatch a person up with this tentacle and then become them. And once they become them, the body that they used to be just disappears and is never seen from again. And that ends up being kind of a chunky plot point, but we can accept this. What happens to this body after you engulf him? Oh, it won't be here anymore. <laughs> How convenient. Yeah, so this alien escapes a high security government facility by doing some of this body snatching, shape shifting stuff, and then later runs into our lead character Amanda at a coffee shop called Retro. You walk in and there's a guy playing a stand up bass and reciting beat poetry, and the barista is wearing a beret. So Amanda's reading the paper and she sees that, you know, there is this alien invasion that has happened, and then very quickly sees this attractive woman across the room and sees that she's not quite right. So anyway, she walks over to this woman and says, look, I see you, I know it's you, you're not doing this human thing so well. She's found out this alien, the alien's like, yeah, you found me out. And then Amanda's like, well, I will teach you how to be human better. And the alien's like, Sure. And this is where the rating part gets even crazier and it becomes a made for Showtime movie where she takes this woman home and it's like... You need a shower. You mean rain? And then gets her naked. You see a scene where she's been wearing her bra backwards. It's pretty ridiculous. And then she gets her in her shower and then describes how to wash her body. So the aliens, strangely in this scene, is like, I don't understand how to wash my body. And then Amanda gets in the shower and shows her. And it just takes on a very like softcore plot, but still feels like a show for teenagers at the same time. 
You should be happy compared to you, I have the body of a 12-year-old boy. Later, after a different shapeshift, when the alien ends up taking over Amanda's sort of boyfriend, the alien then is able to see sex happen or experience it and then get really good at that really quickly in a way that sort of contradicts not having any clue how to wash herself. I guess unless you just count that their style of learning is by doing and not by listening. You seem different to me in this new body. Oh my god, Charlie lives. <laughs> Things get interesting when the alien ends up switching into Amanda's boyfriend's body. One, because the movie comes from this really kind-hearted place when it comes to gender fluidity. The jokes just end up feeling pretty nice around that stuff. The way that it digs into stereotypes is kind of funny. And also the only reason that the alien switches bodies is because Amanda suggests that maybe it should grab a male body so that it just has an easier time on our planet, which is, you know, kind of similar to when we see Ken enter the real world in Barbie. Yeah, it's so much easier being a guy. I mean, they just go around, keep to themselves, act all tough, and everybody basically leaves them alone. So as the box mentions, there's a really unforgettable sex scene featuring Paprika. What could that mean? It means that the alien, at one point where Amanda is doing a perfectly normal, uh, making a peanut butter and pickle sandwich for herself, and the alien, meanwhile, is getting a little bit weirder and is trying all the spices on the spice rack. The hunger comes very suddenly when it comes. New to this planet, let's see what all these spices are all about. Starts eating paprika and it has quite an effect on the alien who is at that point still on a female body, kind of getting pretty excited about this whole paprika thing. And then later, when they are in bed together, there is a scene where a lot of paprika is spread all over Amanda and consumed by the alien when it is a male. And yeah, it's a, it's a pretty, it's a pretty special scene in a decade of pretty memorable sex scenes. So kudos to Amanda and the Alien for being a sex positive movie and having a good attitude about gender fluidity. I'm impressed. Would I recommend the movie? It's not gonna be for everybody, <laughs> certainly. And I think if you are really into campy stuff, you'll probably have a good time with it. I think that like if this were programmed in like a queer cinema night with a big audience, I think there would be a lot of laughs at both the intentional stuff and the unintentional stuff. I don't know. <laughs> I think I like Donahue better. There is, in the special features of this, a strong visual essay by Willow Caitlin McClay about the trans themes in the movie and much more intelligently than I am talking about the gender fluidity of the alien and how that's often a device in movies like this and she mentions Starman and some others. So I thought that that was a really strong essay. I did not check out the commentary yet. I will do that. What I like to do is load them onto the computer and then consume them in podcast form. So I will get to that and that seems interesting. There's also an audio essay on here and I'll say I started to check it out and I will also listen to it later in podcasty kind of form, but I'm not crazy about the format of audio essay. And I think that even when the content is really good as it often is, I just think it's tough to sell that as something to, to sit down and watch. It's like a, a 10 minute piece that probably could have had visuals and been a little bit more compelling as something to watch instead of just to listen to. We found it very odd. Well, that's very promising, Lieutenant. All in all, I would say that Amanda and the Alien is a pretty good disc. It's a fun movie. I would say the bigger the group of folks that you can get on board with this kind of thing and watching it together, I think there's a lot to have fun with in this. This release does have a good amount of stuff on it. The essay by Willow Caitlin McClay is great. And I think adding the trans context to this movie makes the whole product a lot stronger than it is without that. So I would recommend this one if you're into queer cinema, if you're into campy cinema, if you're into stony baloney, eating a bag of Skittles by yourself cinema, I think you'll get some enjoyment out of it. Here, have some paprika before I go, you know, to get your juices flowing. Thanks so much for checking out this review. I would love to hear what you thought of Amanda and the Alien if you wanna share it in the comments below. Uh, please subscribe to this channel if you haven't already. 
and I will see you soon with another review. Thanks for watching.